And so Schrodinger wants to know, what is going on? What is it that keeps alive things moving and walking around and making noise and raising a fuss? And the answer, as he, as he quite correctly puts it, is my favorite law of physics, the second law of thermodynamics. Second law of thermodynamics is a very, this is not the same chick that was on the cover. <laughs> Death, what can you do? Uh, the second law of thermodynamics is the law that says that the entropy of the universe or of any closed, isolated bit of the universe increases as time goes on. Entropy is simply a measure of the disorderliness, the messiness, the chaotic nature of stuff. If you start with an unbroken egg, it is easy to break the egg. That makes it more disorderly and disorganized. It is easy to turn that broken egg into scrambled eggs. Again, more disorganized. It is very, very difficult and would never happen by itself to take the scrambled eggs and make it back into the pristine form of an unbroken egg, Humpty Dumpty notwithstanding. <laughs> So this law is very, very profound, and it captures people's imaginations at a sort of social and personal level as well as a scientific level. It also captures the imagination of creationists because they say, look, there's a fundamental law of physics. You're telling us one of the famous laws of 19th century science says that things run down that things become less and less organized over time, that ultimately the universe will reach heat death, and yet you expect me to believe that all of the marvelous complexity of life and the biosphere and evolution that you guys talk about all just happened here on Earth starting from some disorderly primordial goo. How is that possible? Now, there's two answers to this. One is the simple and perfectly correct and short answer, which is, Isolated systems, we said. And the Earth is not an isolated system. There's a little story you can find on the internet. I'm not sure whether it's true or not, but it's a creationist saying, you know, the physicists always say the Earth is not an isolated system, but that can't be right, because if it were, there would be a giant glowing ball of energy in the sky. <laughs> yes. I don't, that's probably not true. I mean, that's just too good to be true that anyone ever said that. But indeed, the reason why Things like this, so I said that's one answer which is completely true. The other answer to the creationist is a more subtle one, which is to say, you know, you're right. It is, it, it doesn't seem to violate the letter of the law in terms of the second law of thermodynamics for life to arise on Earth, but does it violate the spirit of the law? Why is it that complicated, elaborate, complex organisms arose just through the impersonal working out of the fundamental law of physics if there was no guidance there? If, if if anything, the tendency seems to be towards messy disorder. And so here's the Earth drawn by, there's a picture drawn by a famous artist named Roger Penrose. And uh, what you see is that the sun is a hot spot in a cold sky. If the whole sky were the same temperature as the sun, the Earth would get a lot more energy. Energy is good. But the Earth would soon come to be the temperature of the sun and we would all die. If the whole sky were the temperature of the night sky, the Earth would come to be the temperature of the night sky and we would all die. The reason why we are here and life arose on Earth is because the sun is a hot spot in a cold sky. And what happens is we get low entropy energy, orderly energy from the sun that is able to do useful work. We chew our cud and we photosynthesize and we have conventions and we degrade that energy we raise its entropy, and then we send it back to the universe. For every one photon of light we get from the sun, we radiate back 20 photons back into the universe, 20 times the energy, sorry, 20 times the entropy, 1 20th of the energy per photon. We give exactly as much energy back to the universe as we get. The sun is not useful as a source of energy. It's a source of low entropy energy. And the thing that we do with that low entropy energy is we make life and do what life does. 